Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Aries EDC and another edition of TNFNU, thoughts and feelings and updates. So I wanna to start today by thanking everybody. Um, it's been kind of a long week um, already. Uh, my wife and I had a nice day as we're filming this today. We, I took the day off of work, she took the day off of work we had a nice day together, tried just to get away, get away from all the craziness that we've been going through for the past couple weeks. Um, tomorrow, Friday, I'm gonna do the live stream and get a bunch of work done. And then Saturday, we're gonna do something again. So we're gonna have two days together to enjoy each other and to have a good day together. And that was well needed. Um, so, but I wanted to thank you guys because um, you pushed me through. You got me through this month. This month has not been an easy one. Um, but I took it on myself and I put all the pressure on me. And I want to explain why I put the pressure on me. Because it's not you guys putting the pressure on me. It's me putting the pressure on me. Um, and all of the projects that I decided to take on. And it's not that I can't get it done. And it's not that if it goes over into May, it's a not a big deal, but it is a big deal to me. And here's why. Because I have to look at it as the big picture. So March builds took a little longer and that set me back in April. So April, I technically in April had seven builds to do. Um, and then the two in March came in late from the heat treating, and that put me behind for April. So I was feeling the pressure because I was already taking that. And I didn't, the reason that I don't wanna take my time, and, or I do wanna take my time, that's not the right way to say it. The reason I don't want it to go into May too long is because I'm gonna open my books up for May. And already we see that I can get the stain, if anybody wants stainless, I'm getting them done at the beginning of the month, shipping them to Peters, which that takes three to four days. Then Peters does their work, that takes a couple weeks, and then they ship it back with takes another three to four days to get back to me. And by you know it, by the time you know it, it's the end of the month, and that pushes me back. So I don't want to prolong the knives that I'm working on now too long and take too much time away from them because then that pushes back May and then that could push back June and then that could push back July. And before you know it, I'm in July working on knives in May still. <laughs> and that would just drive me bonkers. Um, I know in the book's video, I do tell you it's a six to eight week turnaround. And that honestly is probably a good time frame for the amount of knives that I'm doing. May, I'm gonna do the five builds. We're gonna try it again. I'm gonna do the five builds and one extra build. And I'm gonna to talk to you guys about that here in a minute, but it's coming very soon. So keep an eye out on the channel, but I just wanna thank you guys because you've all been positive with your comments. You've reached out me to me individually and reassured me it's okay. And as much as I understand that, I, I still feel the pressure because I need to make sure I'm not falling behind next month because that, that impedes next month. Um, because ultimately I wanna be able to keep up with demand and keep up with everybody getting what they need or, or want from, from me. The more knives I put out into the community, <clears throat> the more feedback I'm getting to be better and uh, the more knives I can sell because the positive um, things that you guys continually say has been awesome. So thank you, thank you, thank you for keeping things positive. Thank you for allowing me to continue doing something that I still enjoy and I still um, love the process, 
I still enjoy the challenge and I still enjoy pushing myself to do new things. So I thank you all for that. Uh, what I want to talk to you guys was something that during our day together, my wife brought up to me and she was asking me about the knife thing. And she was like, so do you ever see yourself doing that full time? <clears throat> And that was a tough one because that is so far out in the periphery that I, I don't know how to answer that question. She's like, well, what's the future of that? And I was like, I don't know. Because for me to even contemplate trying to do more than what I'm doing now, I really have to rethink <clears throat> machines, the tooling, the tools that I'm using, and maybe some other things that I kind of have on the back burner right now. I have to be able to up my production. I have to be able to do higher turnaround and work faster. Um, for me comfortably to can do this full time, not only would I have to make, but I would have to make and then sell at least five to six knives a week. And I'm stressed out doing that a month. <laughs> so, <clears throat> and that means I would have to have all the tooling and all of the things that I would need to do everything in house. Heat treating, tempering, everything with stainless, carbon steel, whatever, I'd have to do everything in house. So probably a two by 72 grinder would speed things up tremendously and would give, open me up to more options. A heat treating oven, um, which would allow me to work with some different steels and heat treat and temper different steels. I would need some liquid nitrogen, some aluminum plating, and probably another 100 square feet in the shop just to fit all of those extra tools. Um, that would be amazing. So, and probably a better drill press. I, that takes a lot of time. So that, that I would say, that would help me tremendously. And all of those things are very expensive and time consuming and just nowhere near where I need to be right now. So it was an interesting question that she posed to me. I'm not sure why she posed that question, but I think she was just trying to see where I was and how this all the whole thing works because she's been pretty much stand back ish unless I come and ask her um, obviously she's super supportive of everything that I'm doing and um, but she doesn't she's not a knife person I'll show her a knife and she's like okay great it's a knife um, so it's not like I'm gonna get a lot of creative feedback unless I ask her something specific and then she'll critique it in her own way. But not being a knife person, it's kind of good getting that perspective because not everybody is a knife person. So anyway, that was a question that was posed to me. And I really don't know how to answer that because in my, my head, I'm, that's so far out in left field that I don't think I could ever even get to that point. Um, could it be a cool retirement thing? Yeah. That would be fun. At least gives me something to do, keeps my brain active, my body active, and it keeps me doing stuff and being creative because that's ultimately, I just like being creative with all of this. So what do you guys think? I mean, does that make sense? Um, and then also on the flip side of that, I don't want it to turn into a job. A lot of you guys, that was your point was, this is something fun for you to do, you don't want it to turn into a job that you can't stand doing. Which, you know, leads me into some future stuff that I might be thinking about. Uh, I have to see how this numbers things go. I, I started at the beginning of the year with the five, thinking I can do the five and maybe one or two side projects, but it's turned into, I'm doing the five and then I'm, I'm taking on too many side projects, but then the side projects are kind of 
customer based projects and not personal build projects. There's some personal things that I would like to do, some new designs I would like to try, but there's no way I'm gonna get to those if I'm continually going back to a customer new design or an extra build that a customer wants, which maybe I need to rethink the five and lower that down to maybe three and then I do two that I wanna do and then those can get put on the Etsy store and someone can purchase them off of Etsy or something else, you know? I can sell them. Like I've shared that Damascus build. I really wanna do that. I have no idea when I'm gonna get to that now because I got so many other things that are, people have reached out and asked me for. I don't know when I'm gonna get to it. Maybe July, August, maybe? And I'd like to be able to get that done by the by the end of this year, maybe. I think it's a really fun build and I'm really looking forward to doing it. It's something that I would like to do. <clears throat> Not that the knives that you guys have been asking for isn't something that I like to do, but that I'm building that for you. I'm not building it for me and this would be something that I wanna build and then maybe make available to you guys. So just something to chew on. But I don't know, as far as even comprehending doing this full time, I don't know. I'm not there, uh, and I don't know if I will ever be able to do that, but that is a dream. It's an often dream. It's a great dream to have. Maybe one day, but a lot would have to change, and, and I don't think I have room in that shop for it to make all of that happen. And my wife and I can't get another house, so I don't know. Um, so that's what I have for you as far as my thoughts and feelings for this week. So updates, big update, go away. The big update is that I am done with the 580 CRV2 blades. So that leaves me with only two blades left. So let's get one last look at them. Uh, I've been slowly putting builds out and I'm gonna slowly put videos out of the finished products of these guys. I'm really happy the way that they came out. I already posted a video on the Bloom XL. The Bloom XL with the acid etched tumbled finish. It came out really, really well. Uh, and if you follow me on Instagram, I'm gonna start sharing pictures of all of these guys too. Nice sheath, it's perfect fit. And it came out really, really well. Got the custom bead on it and I'm really happy the way that that came out. Along with that is the Bloom. So you have the Bloom XL and then this is the Bloom. Um, the customer wanted the two loops, so I got on the two loops. Um, and there you have the Bloom. Let's see these two next to each other. I'm running out of room on my table. So you have the Bloom and then the Bloom XL. So you can see much larger, same profile, pretty much, but it's just a larger blade. So, um, excellent, excellent little uh, comparison there. But there you go. There's the Bloom hand satin finish, the same toxic green cure night with the bead and lanyard came out really well. The, again, the Bloom is that three fingers, but that fourth finger on the lanyard gives you plenty enough to make that a full four finger grip. And for EDCing, this is, I don't know, it's gotta be my favorite. That and the Rock Copper are my two favorites that I make for myself. Um, next up, the Flamingo. So the Flamingo with the True Blood Kiranite came out really well. Um, it has the belt satin finish. I did put a little bit of the Wicked Wax. So I got some of this stuff in and I've been playing with it. Um, if you are interested in getting a, a product that will help protect your blade, especially your high carbon steel blades, you put a little bit of this on there, you'll be good to go. It'll protect your blade from any corrosion. So Wicked Wax, 
definitely so far I'm kind of liking the product and they, they, they're doing really cool stuff. So if you see swirls and stuff on these blades, I can try to clean it off, but I don't want to clean too much of it off um, because I want them protected because these guys are all going to be shipped out very, very soon. Um, so, so this is the last look you guys are all going to get of these guys. So you got the belt satin finish. Um, the True Blood Cure Knight came out really, really good. I like it. Um, and this thing has a little bit of jimping right there at the harpoon. And again, super comfortable. Three fingers with the lanyard, custom bead. And it came out really, really well. So that's the Flamingo. We have the pistol in that Gold Rush Inlace Acrylic. Came out really nice. Uh, this scale has some depth in it and some different colors. And then this one is <laughs> got that nice gold, nice depth on it, hand satin finish on the blade. Um, and it came out really, really, really well. And that handle came out super comfortable. I Coke bottled it up really nice. So you can see all the contouring on that and the contouring here. And it just fits really well in the hand. So I'm hoping that customer enjoys that knife. The gray Kydex with the black loop. It's a nice classic look. Got a little bit of ramp there. I think it'll be good. And finally, the Crow. Um, this is not part of the books. This was an extra build that I took on. Uh, the Crow is definitely not something that I am gonna do often. It's really, really just too big uh, for me. <laughs> that is a big blade. And the history of the Crow, you kind of have to go back and watch some of the other videos on the history of the Crow. But basically, I had a chunk of steel laying around. It kind of had that little shape to it. I kind of put that tip on there and I was like, hmm, that's interesting. That's a giant thing, but that's an interesting thing. But the Arctic Blue here tonight looks really killer on that thing. And I'm really happy with the way that that came out. So I'm hoping, again, that customer is happy with that finished product, which only leaves two more for April. That leaves the pistol, which this is Mattis Faction's pistol. I got it pretty cleaned up. I got to do a couple things to it before it's ready for the etching of the logo, which is going to be right there. Um, but it's looking really, really good. He wanted a belt satin finish, so I got that for him. I just need to do a little bit of touching before I do the etching on it. Got a little forward jimping on it. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. There you go. Some nice forward jimping right there at the harpoon. It's super comfortable. I stretched out that harpoon just a little bit because everybody kept saying, Matty, he's got huge hands. So we'll see how that fits in his hand. And then finally is the Tobiko uh, hand satin finish. Both of those, the pistol and this are AEB-L stainless. Just got them back from heat treating. And this one is ready definitely for the etching of the logos. Uh, the Tobiko also gets kind of a rounded crown there at the front. So I kind of round that edge off and it's super comfortable in the hand. Your thumb gets right there at that ramp. We're not really calling it a harpoon. It's more of a ramp, but right there. And just a reminder that that Tobiko is going to get that blue Kiranite like the Crow had. And Maddie's is going to have this Damalux in red and black layers. So you see it's going to have the layers in it. So as I contour it and shape all the curves, you're going to start to see all the layers coming through. It's going to be pretty, pretty awesome. So those are the projects that I have going on. Those are my thoughts and feelings. And soon, soon, very, very soon, May books are going to be opening. So again, these are the rules for May books. I'm going to post a video here on YouTube. 
do not comment in that video. You either have to message me on Instagram or email me at ariesedc at gmail.com. <clears throat> Those are the two ways that you can enter. Not now, not this video, but the open books video. <clears throat> when you see that, that is when you reach out. And it's always helpful if you know what model you want, <clears throat> which steel you want, and an idea of handle materials and finish. So you can do acid etched and tumbled, hand satin finish, um, belt satin finish, although belt satin is very, it's not as easy for me to do, but I do my best. So that, those are your options, but it's not this video. It's not this video, so it's coming very soon, but you know, as soon as that video comes up, then you can get in the books. Um, I, I, I try to make it as fair as possible. It's first come, first serve, and it usually you have to subscribe to this channel, turn notifications on, check your settings, and make sure you have the individual settings for Aries EDC notifications on. I don't know how it works. I don't know what you're looking at, so I can't can't troubleshoot with you on how to fix it. Um, and get over to Instagram at AriesEDC and subscribe and do everything there and shoot me a message because then at least I'll have you in my messages and you're not hidden. So that's what I got for you guys. Good luck to everybody. Thank you again for being such great people. Please subscribe, like, leave a comment or not. That choice is yours.